Hello my hashtag insane fans. Near the end of the video we'll give you a sneak peek at what all these other boxes are for. But right now in this video we're going to unbox this puppy right here which is a 5 horsepower 240 volt electric motor 22 amp and we're going to see if it is actually capable we want to see if she's actually capable of powering up and running this big air compressor three piston compressor insanely cool cars tool reviews and auto repair videos both of these are 3450 rpm motors one of the things i like about this replacement motor is unlike this one who's supposed to be a six horsepower motor but only pulls 15 amps at 240 volts this one pulls 22 amps and it's supposed to be five horsepower so i'm more inclined to believe the 22 amps uh, motor being a more powerful motor than the 15 amp now i'm not an electrical engineer so if you disagree with me on that then let me know in the comments below and why because i'm i'm all the time ready to learn something one of the things that also impresses me about the other motor it has a 7 8 shaft and this only has a 5 8 shaft most of your light duty motors have 5 8 shaft and most of your heavy duty motors have a 7 8 shaft it's been my experience i don't know that to be a fact but from what i've seen in the bigger air compressors and the more industrial air compressors at some of the places that i've worked they all have the 7 8 shaft motors like this one and i've seen some motors that were the size of this tank that were rated at five horsepower but they pull a lot more than 20 amps one thing that does worry me a little bit about this motor is that it was only like 200 and something dollars it wasn't even 300 dollars. but if a big air compressor three piston air compressor can't kill it then it mu they must have done something right when they built it we're going to find out now because this has a larger shaft I've got a new pulley here for the larger shaft. But if you are changing your motor out and you're using the same size pulley and you want to reuse your old pulley, what I like to do here is with the guard off, you've got access to both sides and I like to spray some PV blaster or WD-40 or some other penetrating lube uh, everywhere I can. And then immediately I have a little spray bottle with some transmission fluid in it and I immediately spray that on it too. I do that and leave it overnight. And then when I come back, I use the wire wheel and polish this off as much as I can. And there will always be a lock here somewhere. Okay, right there it is. Let's turn it here, see if you can see it. Right there. You usually have to use an Allen to unscrew that. Once you get that out, if you turn that up and spray it with the PV blaster or WD-40 as well, and then put a little transmission fluid on it, that also helps. And the groove where your keyway is, you can see back here it's exposed to when you turn it up like that. So it's a good position to have it in when you spray everything down because it'll hold a little bit of the penetrating oil and let it seep down in there. Then when you take your electric motor off, you can take it into your workbench and get a gear puller on here and pull that off with a gear puller. Luckily, we don't have to do all that on this one. Now, if your motor is the same as mine with the same kind of mount, then you can use the link in my description to, to find that motor. But if it's not, this is a P56 type mount. And if your mount is different, then you're not going to have a P56. And there should be some place on your sticker here that tells you what style of mount you have. Or if you're smarter than I am and you can tell by looking at the mount what style it is, then use that when you're searching for your motor. You can still follow the link in the description to this motor. And once you get there, if yours is a little bit different than what we're using here, you scroll down on Amazon and it'll show you a bunch of suggestions of similar motors. And that'll give you a head start on your search by just clicking on the link, scroll down and look at those suggestions. Make sure it says something about compressor duty or compressor motor because it takes a lot more power and a much heavier duty motor to run an air compressor than most things.
be careful with these kind of straps because they will cut you to the bone. You're pulling on them like I'm doing right now with bare hands and your hand slips across one of them. You think paper cuts are bad. Jeez, man, these things will rip you open. Okay, I'm going to get a glove for this. If you're wondering what this other pump, compressor pump is for, I actually took this off of this compressor and upgraded to the big three piston pump in another video that we did. And I show you how to run all these pipes and stuff, how to modify everything to upgrade to that big old pump. I think it's, a, if I remember right, a little over 16 cubic feet per minute. All right, moment of truth. Woo. Well, it's got some nice padding in here. More padding, more padding. This thing is heavy, dude. All right, this is gonna take more than one hand to get this out. Now I laid the box on its side so I can just reach in there and slide it out. Instead of picking it up, possibly banging it down on the table. Still gonna have to use two hands. <laughs> this is neat. It's got its own little tiny pallet in here. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at the size of that shaft. It's a monster. All right, let's feel of this, what the bearings feel like. It's really smooth. I like that. No noise. Nice smooth turning. Quite a bit larger start and run capacitors. It's a good sign. All right, there's our mount. It looks to be in good condition. It is a P56 style mount. It's a little bit wider than our old mount, but it's got holes in several places so that maybe we can still line up. If not, we'll do some drilling and tapping. It is thermally protected, which is good. If you have a pump lock up or a leak or something and it runs and runs and runs and gets hot, uh, the thermal protection should shut it off and keep you from ruining your motor. I don't know about you guys, but I save all these silica gel things and I put them in the drawers of my toolbox to help keep my tools dry. Do any of y'all guys do that same trick or any other tricks of the trade? Let me know in the comments. Let's see if this new pulley fits. Oh, it has two Allen locks on it. That's good. I like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Fits perfectly. All right. So... We're gonna have to, of course, adjust our depth once we get the motor mounted up there, so we're not gonna lock these down yet. And then we'll move our pulley back and forth till we get it lined up just right. Let's take it over here and double check, make sure we did get a four inch pulley it's exactly the same size as the old pulley. Because both these motors are 3,450 RPM. That is exactly the same size pulley, that's awesome. It's gonna fit that belt well too, all right. And the old pump that came off of here was uh, around 1200 RPM, right at around, and so is this one, this three, this three piston pump is uh, around 1200 RPM. So 1350 RPM from the motor, 1200 RPM pump. And this, this flywheel is, the same diameter as this flywheel that came with this three piston pump so we should be very similar in rpms and before we can start taking these bolts off and unmount the motor you know there are some wires that go to it so we've got to take the cover off and get the wires loose and in order to do that we've got to get this air filter off So just like everything else, everything's got to be backward engineered until you realize that it's a big old project <laughs> involving twice as much work and twice as much cost as you thought it would. 
Well, we had to replace this anyway because we've got a leak down here. We also had a leak over here, but we replaced all this. All the regulators and dryers, except this one, of course. That one's been burnt for, for decades. Most of these, once you've got the screw loose up here, just rock it back, comes right off, and there's your wire connections. Now, at this point, if you're just replacing the motor, you just want to take your outbound wires going from the switch to the motor loose. Or if you're lucky enough to where this length of wire is still going to be good for you, you'd just be taking the wires loose in the motor and swapping those over. In our case, we're going to have to run a longer wire from here, come around to the input over here on the new motor. So all these wires are going. Uh, this switch has been leaking, so the switch is going. And if you want to be safe with the wires and stuff, there's usually a disconnect box. If you don't have a disconnect box, at least go to the breaker box and turn off the breaker. But the disconnect box, you can just pull that out, set it on top of the box so you can see it, and then you know that it's off. And when you're working on things, you can glance over there every once in a while and, and know that there's no power going to any of this. All right, there's the new switch. In order for this new switch to work, here's the problem here. Yes, it will screw right on there, even though these are a little bit different. But we've got three plugs here that need to be plugged off, three holes here. And we could put a gauge in one of these if we wanted to, but we already have a gauge right here in the regulator. So it's off to the hardware store to get a couple of plugs. Let me know in the comments below if y'all have a collection like I do here of hardware. It's all organized with stuff that you just cannot stand to throw away. As I look here before I go to the hardware store, and right here I have brass fittings. I've got all these trays full of brass fittings and stuff. I found this, and I do have some plugs. But it appears every one of them is either too small, too large, or it's plastic. And I don't want to put anything plastic in there. So it appears I'm going to the hardware store anyway. Now if I have to go to the hardware store, this is my favorite. Industrial Bearing and Supply, also known as Do It Best Hardware. Unfortunately, it's closed today, but if this place is open during the week and you get a chance to go by here, it is full of amazing classic cars. Now here's a sneak peek, look right here. Look at that Ford pickup. See the back of it over here. Check it out. All the cars and trucks and stuff of the 60s, 70s, some of them from the 50s, and they're in amazingly great shape. I ended up at Lowe's getting these quarter inch pipe plugs. Should do the trick. Anytime you're dealing with threads that have to be sealed off, get you some Teflon tape. It's really cheap. Look at that right there. Makes leaving the house worth it, doesn't it? Now getting this off is all wrench work here, so let me just show you. I'm not gonna bore you with uh, having to watch all this for a long period of time. So skip to something more interesting. Alright, now that I got her off here, we got the 15 amp six horsepower motor right here that was the original motor and the 22 amp uh, five horsepower motor you see some differences of course this one this 22 amp motor is quite a bit bigger they're both single phase induction motors uh, this has got a much larger shaft i think once it's sit on there uh, hopefully we'll be able to get the pulley back far enough I think we will. The only one way to know, well, let's set it up there and see. All right, guys, check this out. It looks good. We've got the base here. It has these extra, it's much wider, but it has these extra grooved holes in it, just like the other one. And they're in the same place where we can put our bolts back in the original holes. We don't have to do a lot of drilling or anything. And since the base is wider, it's better at helping hold the extra weight of this bigger motor. 
and it looks like when we get the pulley on here we're going to have no problem lining that up perfectly before we tighten it down so i'm going to get some bolts in here of course we're going to have to come back and put our wires in here and run them to the switch but uh, i'm going to get started on putting the bolts in here these bolts right here like any other bolts make sure you don't tighten any down till you have them all in there and even then don't tighten them down because this is where you pull the motor away from the pump once your belt is on to take the slack out of your belt okay with all all four bolts in there i've got it slid mostly toward the pump so we can get this pulley on here and our offset is to the outside this application once the belt is on there you want to move this pulley in and out and find it looks really way too close there it took too far out that way so we want to split the difference it's a little bit too far back that way a little bit too far forward that way a bit too far back a little bit too far forward so right in the middle of there That should be perfect. Now I'm gonna carefully turn this. Try not to get your finger caught in between the flywheel and the belt. It'll pinch the crap out of you. Turn this, turn this, turn this. Make sure it feels good, which it does. All right. Now I spin it a little back the other way and get these up here where I can tighten them down. Gotta go get the proper Allen wrench for that. If you haven't been working out, you don't have the strength to, to pull on this while tightening up your bolts at the same time. You can take an old serpentine belt or a regular leather belt, wrap it around this, wrap it around a pry bar, and take your pry bar with the belt wrapped around it and catch right here and then pull this over without actually prying on the motor itself. And I say up here near the front because this is where you're pulling on the belt. If you pull this thing from the back or push on this thing from the back, you're going to get this caught and caught and it's not going to want to slide and your motor's not going to be lined up right either. Okay, now this cover on the back is going to have seven millimeter heads on it. And if they're really tight, you got to get the socket and use the seven millimeter. If they're not really tight, you might get by with a Phillips head screwdriver. If you, if, if you, there's a trick to these things. If you, if you tilt this back and get it lined up that hole right there, then you can lift up and out because there's a groove down here too. Similar to the covers on uh, four, four inch boxes and house wiring. All right, under here you've got two connections. <laughs> and it's got blade connectors here and nuts here so that you can you've got a couple of different ways you can connect your wires up uh, there's a relief right here so you don't have to pull this out well you might want to depending on how you're hooking it up okay well i've got some armored cable here and this is threaded so it just threads right in there i mean the motor's threaded too so it threads right in there I'd, Obviously did use this port here instead of using this little dinky space for non-armored cable. And our ground wire is going to go here. And then, of course, our power wire is here and here. I'll show you when I'm... And I've got one of the wires in, and what I'm doing is there are two washers here. And I'm separating the washers, bringing the silver washer towards the front and the copper washer toward the back and pinning the wire between the two. And this is what that looks like all hooked up. Get the 
this in the bottom first. Line that up with the big hole. Slide it over. Oops. Can't even do that one handed. Now we still have the matter of the switch. It's good to clean off all that old thread tape before trying to apply the new stuff. It's like it's ready for the new Teflon tape to me. See, now if you want to have your fun without consequences, make sure you wrap that sucker. I did find this old gauge, but I've got three of these in case this gauge leaks. I can take it back out and put a plug in it. And this was leaking here before. So since we've got a new switch, we've got a new whatever that piece is. Thingamajigabababa. Well, now there's no more cords either. It's just all armored wire. So... And here, make sure you remember to put your wire nuts on before you hook up any of your wires. And I still need to tighten that. And it looks like I should come back here later, clean up the tank, and replace this with a newer, shinier gauge, even if it doesn't leak. Because, dang, look at that. It's going to be nice. Make sure you hook your ground wires up way down in here before you try to hook any of the other wires up because these are going to be in the way of messing with the ground wires. Okay, the incoming wires. Black here. And I guess that's red or brown. There, I'm colorblind, so you guys will have to tell me in the comments if that's red. It is getting cold and dark out here. And I want to finish this. All right, we got the black wire here. The white wire here, uh, the ground here, everything's hooked up. This is the outgoing wires. These are the incoming wires. And I'm going to put the cover on this thing. Air cleaner back on. And hopefully I'll be able to start this up for you guys. I'd like to finish this project before it gets too dark and cold. And go ahead and edit this video and upload it. And I'd like to take this moment to tell you if I haven't told you in a while just how much I really appreciate you guys watching my videos and supporting my channel. It means a lot. And, and I just don't know what to say other than you guys are awesome. You are so awesome. And I really, really appreciate you. Okay, now I should put the guard on there, but I'm going to run out of time to do. Woo! Well, it works! noise coming from this motor that just slowly over time came on because that electric motor right there this motor is a lot quieter than the other one and that 
pump is a lot quieter than I thought because I thought all that noise was coming from the pump. Bigger pump with more noise back. I don't know. But See what we got on crank. Alright guys, I promised you I was going to show you some of those foxes and, and let you know what's coming next, so let's go do that. I still got a lot of tools to put away, and look at this! We got a visitor. There's our critter. This gauge, I'm hoping is not accurate. It looks like it shut off at right after 150 pounds. So we're gonna have to back that off just a little bit. So there's the spot where the electric motor was. It's all installed on the compressor now like magic. And look what we've got here. That's a steam system. The McCulloch steam system. And it's the good sized one, so we're going to do some car cleaning with that when the weather breaks. Gosh, it's so much warmer in here than it is out there. It was getting cold, man. We've got a box full of goodies here. We've got a Black & Decker polisher that we're going to try out. we got, uh, oh, we got a sound system. Look at this. This is a recording system we're going to be using with the microphone and everything to help make those interviews when we do the car show, the show car features make those interviews sound so much better and then you guys I'm, i appreciate y'all putting up with the the bad sound coming out of the camera during those loud car shows and all that background noise but you're not going to have to put up with that anymore we're going to fix that all right we've got some more stuff for the corvette oh i should have shown you when we were out there in the barn garage we've got a lot of parts for the corvette we're going to be doing a lot of corvette projects we've got some led lights for one of the pieces of equipment we may get another set of these because i'm having a hard time deciding whether to put these on the bobcat or the kubota and here we have a foam cannon this is one of the cheaper off-brand foam cannons and we're going to see if it can do just as good as the more expensive ones so you'll know whether to uh, spend the money on on one of these or spend some more money and get uh, a name brand all right and Oh, uh, another, another copy. Uh, I was going to give this to somebody. Speaking of giving to somebody, we are going to do some giveaways. Uh, maybe we should do uh, some unboxings of this is a whole another case uh, from a retired collector full of Hot Wheels. And I was thinking about doing some unboxings of Hot Wheels and stuff because, you know, we've got that big eBay store and we sell a lot of transmission parts and we sell some Hot Wheels too. And we get them by the case and we have another case of brand new hot wheels here from mattel that we haven't opened yet and i was thinking about maybe doing an unboxing on that and maybe if if y'all want to see unboxings of the hot wheels let me know in the comments below and we'll start doing those and when we do those maybe we'll give some of them away we'll do a giveaway Anyway, that gives you a pretty good idea of what's coming up on unboxings and some repairs and some car cleaning videos. Sorry, once I get down there, it's hard to get up. I think we got a new scanner in here too, one of those that Bluetooths to your phone. I'm gonna have to try that out. Till the next video, try to stay safe, don't catch COVID, and get off that couch and get dirty. Before, after.
before. After. Before. After. Before. After. Before Insane Mods. After Insane Mods. Before. After.